Hi everyone, we've got a really lovely summer scene today um, with a little bit of a dried up stream um, and some really nice tree tree shapes in here for us to capture. Um, what I've done first of all is drawn the, the drawing out really lightly. So I've got this tree here simplify the background a little bit you can have a couple of um, very distant hills and some some tree lines here then work your way down so do this bank first and get that one in then separate and look look where this bank is this side and then you can put the areas of the grass and the shrubbery in um, just the thing to know is where these come here and here that will help you gain that perspective of this dried up stream going that way so they come here and here on the paper okay colours wise I've mixed up a few to start with so I've got cobalt blue cobalt blue and burnt sienna a bit of lemon yellow we don't need a huge amount of that sepia on its own and then this mix is intense blue or winter blue red shade if you're using artist quality or Pathalo or Prussian, they will all do the same job with a bit of burnt sienna so you get a really nice dark green. Okay, so we're going to come on first of all and do the sky. So come straight over that tree with the water. And all the way down to the line of hills in the background. I'm going to use my round number 10 and come in with a little bit of cobalt blue. And I can spread this quite thinly it's quite a wispy sky it's not the the focal of the picture at all today circular motion to get that nice sort of cloud wispy effect don't mess too much with the paint let the paint settle and do its own thing So you're going to have some little wispy white bits of cloud, a lot of blue in the sky and then I want you to dab a little bit into the grey. Now you're not taking too much in, we don't want stormy sky but it's just going to give that little bit of extra depth and a bit of variety as that splits out a little bit. You can keep it towards the top, that always works quite nicely sense of distance okay so I'm going to dry that one off okay so that's all nice and dry now so next we're going to come in and do this very distant I don't know if it's it's a hill or whether it's actually foliage in the distance but we'll get those in so I'm going to put a little bit of water and there's a little bit of one here as well I'm just going to bring in so I'm just coming into the grey just dropping some of that in doesn't have to be everywhere you can swap down to a number six if you want you 
the whole thing about using the colours that we're using in the sky so that it gives it that sense of distance. I'm just dabbing into a little bit of the blue as well. Bring that through. So I've made this one look more like foliage by just altering the brush at the top a little bit and dabbing through. This one looks more like a hill. Okay, I'll dry those ones off. Okay, so they're all nicely dried now. I'm gonna come in with this next layer that's going forward. This is this really dark tree line next. So a little bit of water's going on. You can do this bit by bit, so you can split it into two sections. Don't feel you've got to do it all in one go. I'm gonna come on first of all with a little bit of that gray just so we're carrying it through because it's still quite distant and that helps it knock back a little bit. Then I'm going to come into that green, dark green mix which was the intense blue and burnt sienna. along. So if you keep your brush quite vertical then the tip will create this sort of foliage tree effect along that line. Then you want to make sure you've got a nice line at the bottom here because the contrast is going to be that really lemon yellow grass which will work really nicely. doing exactly the same tip of the brush to start to create the foliage Just keep dabbing in. Mixed up a tiny bit more paint. You want to make sure that it's fairly dark that contrast. It's a little bit on the light side so I'm just bringing in a little bit more paint whilst I've still got the chance to do it. If you can leave this to dry naturally the intense blue always benefits from it. Um, it tends to fade quite a lot with the hair dryer. Okay, and then over this far right hand side, 
there's a little more, bit more of a, a shrub here which I'm going to pop in I'm coming on to dry this is only a small area and it's that same dark green so I'm just going to get that in now just dab 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 and then that smooth line at the bottom where that grass is going to contrast against it okay I'm going to dry those ones off okay so that's nice and dry now just to simplify this I've loaded my brush with water and then I've dabbed into the sepia which is quite strong but because I've loaded my brush it's working really nicely and I'm just going to pop in this little bit of a brownish field I can see here just so that's coming along there make sure I give my brush a really good rinse now because I'm going to go into lemon yellow next I've also put a tiny dab of sap green on my palette just so that I've got that to hand so I'm going to wet a bit of this section I'm going to wet further than I need to go because I want the paint to not have a hard edge at that bottom edge and then I'm coming into my lemon yellow this is really nice and strong I'm just coming along where that grass is you can go a bit further where your tree trunk is going to be it doesn't matter just want to try to preserve a soft edge at the bottom so my paints coming to here but I've wet down to here I'm not rinsing the brush I'm going to dab into a tiny little bit of sap green and just put a shoot of that through at the front and then the trick to stop it moving is to dry it off straight away so I've dried that side off I'm going to do exactly the same this side now so I'm wetting the whole of this field where I can see this yellowy grass plus a bit further so that I don't get a hard edge into the lemon yellow shoot that in from the top and across you want this to be nice and bold bring it down so I've got my water coming to here and down to here but the colours only really stay in there not rinsing my brush out into the sap green again and again just bring a little bit of that through don't mess with it too much and then we're going to dry it off to stop it moving okay so that's nicely dry now what I'm going to do next is wet these areas so again I'm just going to take it where the, where the grasses and everything are above I'm just going to take it a little bit further the water so not into the, the dried up stream itself but definitely up into the the grassy foliage just a little bit more and then see where my lines are this side I'm going to take it a little bit further it's just to stop that just hard line happening where we don't want it with it because of the grasses are going to form the hard line but we do want a harder line where where the dark is with the dried up stream okay 
So I'm going to take again a loaded brush, sepia, So you're not too bothered about what's happening in, at the top because that's just blending. But I do want you to have a little bit of a focus on what might be happening at the bottom. You can start to paint the base of these twiggy bits and the bits of wood in. We'll work around these a bit later on anyway. So I can take a little bit of that in as well. Just got to make sure you don't go too strong. And if you can see there's a slope on this bank, so we're going to paint in the direction of that slope just so that it starts to give that feeling a bit sloping if you've got some rose on your palette I just want you to dab it into a tiny bit of it and just bring a hint of it through. It's not essential. If you don't like the rose, you don't have to use it. You know I like my rose. And I want you to bring it more into that bottom third. Again, it's just bringing it forward a little bit. Then I want you to get some trusty salt. That mine's out his own and just sprinkle before it dries and that's just going to give us a little bit of texture to work with later okay so you're going to let that dry naturally and it's a good time for a coffee break okay that bit started to dry really nicely and whilst that bit's drying, I'm going to come in and just get a little bit more in this background here, area here. So I've got that same dark green mix, which is the intense blue and burnt sienna. Because we're going to get brighter as we come forward, we'll add a little bit more blue at that stage and it, that'll make it become brighter. But at this stage, I want this to still stay quite far back. So I'm just popping a little bit of water on. I'm using my round number six because I've loaded my ten up with the green and I don't want to rinse it off. I'm going right the way up to the bottom base of the tree there. What I'm going to do, because I need this to be this to be different to this, is I'm going to pop a bit of sap green on. So the sap green is going to be bringing this forward a bit and sending the other bit back a bit. And then I'm coming in. With that same mix now if you look there's all different colors in there but we're just simplifying it so it's still going to work and hold together with shrubbery and you can leave some of the sap green showing
from this section just at the bottom make sure that you're getting a jaggedy edge there because it's coming into more foliage just there and then this here wants to be quite horizontal so I mean it is slanted up and I don't want it to be too slanted just a case of fiddling a little bit just to get a nice edge if you like the other bits of colour in there you can always pop a bit of burnt sienna in on its own first that would work quite nicely okay I'll dry that off and then I'm going to rub the salt off as well okay Okay, so we're going to come now onto this side. I've rubbed the salt off, it's dry. Get this area in, in the middle that we haven't got in yet. So, plenty of water. You want a bit of credit card or something like a knitting needle to hand to do some scratching in in a minute so start with a little bit of the lemon yellow you can just dab some of that in I'm going to also dab in to that lemon yellow a little bit of the rose because there's some pinky tones just here Then I'm dabbing into the sap green. If these colours are all fairly thick, you'll find that they don't run too far. If when you're popping them on, they're running like mad, they're too thick, or you've just got too much water. So you should be getting a nice effect of it running a little bit but not going mad so if you're using neat sap green it's easier and you're going to come all the way up to this edge to the bank okay so that totally cut off at the wrong point what I did was I then came in with a little bit of the darker green and dabbed that in in fact I can still move some of this round it's all still quite wet and then I've come in with the knitting needle and just started to scratch in so that I'm creating at the bottom this sort of grassy effect at the top I've turned upside down and then I've run some of this darker green through to start to make the grasses at the top happening here you can do as much of this as you want this is a base and you can take a little bit on later Okay, so I'm going to do the same on the other side now. So, lots of water. The water is just going to give you lots more time. And then in with your lemon yellow first. You've got this grassy area at the bottom. So you want plenty of the lemon yellow on there. And 
then into your saffron remember that blend and it's splitting out is what's going to give it that that foliage effect and then my brush a bit a little rinse touch into some of the rose just to get that pinkiness happening if it's a tad too pink just take a little bit more of the lemon yellow in and then you're going to come in with your darker green which I'm just mixing a bit more up because I've run out So this all needs to be quite fluid and you can use this as a base we're going to do some stippling today so that's going to be a bit different not really done that before so don't get too bogged down with the detail as long as it's getting this this fine feathery effect it's going to work now I'm going to flip round to get this top edge so I'm not going to use any any paint but I'm just going to bring what I've got out a little bit little wiggles just so that I've not got a hard edge it doesn't want to be too smooth it needs to be broken up oh great oh, the postman's here just at the wrong time and then I'm just going to just bring knitting needle through very quickly because I need to go and answer the door to the postman destined not to to get to show you this fully so there's a few at the back here okay and then i'm going to dry that off so that's that base there okay so with um a little bit of a bit of wax you can just come over and just create a few little stony bits um, i'm gonna try it might not work but i'm gonna try putting these little branchy bits through with the wax as well and just see what happens then I'm going to come on with a little bit of water Just around this area, there's a little bit of a grassy hump here. It's a bit bluer, so I'm just going to take a bit of the cobalt blue in. A few streaks coming down, and then the rest is sepia. So you want horizontal strokes I 
and you're going to work your way along hopefully I'm going to have a couple of stony bits come off of this now there's a couple of little stones appeared there and then just break into this bank so that it's not too too smooth Keep working your way up. I've got like a little bit of a log happening here, so I'm going to leave that. Lighter. And I can see them the branches have sort of worked, but not great. So horizontal strokes all the way up. And just keep checking your edges. You've got nice edges appearing. So that's where that grassy hump's gonna be. Darker in there. Okay, so I'm going to dry that one off. Now, what I've got is an oil painting brush. It's got quite stiff bristles and I've popped some water on, made sure it's not too wet and then I'm coming in with a little bit of sap green to start with and what I'm going to do is just start to create the stippling on this tree. So I want you to arch like a, a tree shape arches and just start to gradually build this up. It's an impression of, it doesn't have to be exact. If you come on and it feels too wet, dab a bit off on kitchen towel. We're going to start lighter like we do sponging and then get darker. So you can get the shape with the sap green and then you can come in with the, the darker green over the top. So you're just worrying about the foliage at this point, you're not worrying about the branches they come after. It's a much more controlled way of getting the foliage than the sponge and it does work quite effectively. Just got to make sure you've got plenty of paint. So this is now the darker green that I'm coming on with. Start in this bottom area because it's quite a lot down here. You can leave little bits of the lighter green showing that works quite nicely. There's some highlights on the tree. Just 
going to continue to build it up. And you can go over this as many times as you want to. What's really nice now is you should be getting that nice dark contrast against this light field here and that should be working really well. You can actually take a bit of sepia in if you want it to be dark at this bottom section. I'm going to run through with sepia anyway now. So your branches, I always find it easier to go upside down. You can choose whichever brush you feel most comfortable with and you're just going to run through. So I'm going to start with a bit thicker one. It's quite nice if you can get it whilst it's a little bit wet still because it just tend to blend better then. And then I'm going to go down to a line writer to do these fine ones. And you're just going to bring them through. And what you need to make sure is you haven't got any floaty bits. Less is always more. A really nice effect. You can come back over again with more stippling if you want. It's just a case of building it up. Let's take a little bit more over where there's bits of blended. <laughs> make sure that you've, these are all nicely connected together. And then you can stipple on these foliage sections as well. So you can use a bit of the green. You want to stipple some in. You can use a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the pinky colour, just to create a little bit more texture. So I've done a little bit of stippling on, on both these sides now in that foliage area. Um, you don't need to go mad, it's, it's up to you. I'm coming in with a tiny wash of sepia now with that same stippling brush. And just starting to create the feeling that this bank is sloping down a little bit more. It's giving a little bit of shadow. You could also come on with a little bit of texture if you wanted to. There's a little bit of green in here as well in places. But just pulling it all together now. Net through into the water a little bit in places. That works quite nicely. I'm going to get a little bit of sap green on as well. So we've got this this bit here that needs a little bit of green in. And there's our little bits on the bank. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Might just take a little bit darker just in here. So I've got a little bit of sepia. I've already stippled in a bit of the dark green in here but just to help get that light against dark. It feels like it needs a little bit more just there. So just that little bit of sepia stippled in. 
we'll just set that edge forward a little bit more. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this one. See you next week. Bye.